Cloisterry Cumbry, and I welcome you to a very settled and beautifully calm North Wales. Now today I'm taking a hike through the foothills of the Clawidians, which is a series of hills that separate North Wales to England. Now the Clawidians in itself is a beautiful place to visit, peppered in Iron Age hill forts, thick woodland, and there's lovely trails to take high up on the moorlands there. The story I have for you today is not based in the Cloridians, but very much west towards Ureri. Because a couple of days ago I was taking a hike, a scrape one scramble of Crigach, known as the Red Ridge. Now Crigach leads to our highest mountain in Wales, Urida. And as I was climbing to the peak of Urida, I was thinking, most of Wales has rich history, stories. You can't really stumble over a rock without stumbling over a myth. So as I got down from the mountain, I researched stories specifically about a river and the many peaks that make its crown. And as you would know, being Wales, a Celtic region rich of story and folklore, there is. And one of my favourites is very much based at the highest peak of a river. And the legend has it, on top of the highest peak, there lays a burial chamber to a great giant. Living the dream. Now the legend that is tied to our highest mountain here in Wales is based around the time when the great Roman legions were withdrawing from our shores. And as these legions left, they took with them the security, the law and order and culture that Rome offered the people at this time. As the Romans left, there were many Romano Britons that stayed behind. These were Britons that very much became accustomed to Roman life. They continued living within the great walled cities of Chester, London and York, and others lived in their villas out in the lower regions of the land that we now know as England. However, into the more wild regions of Britain, such as the mountains of Areri, the great Roman forts laid empty. There was no law and justice that came out from those gates, and there were men that were willing to take advantage of the power void and put themselves a mock crown to take control of all those they could subdue and put into a cage of fear. And one man in this legend is said to have done this with great efficiency. Rita Vaur took control of a rare North Wales. Now from the descriptions of Rita Val that have survived the sands of time and have woven their way into the rich tapestry of Welsh storytelling, it is easy to see why people feared him. It was said that he was a brute of a man, savage and warlike, and his temper was as fiery as the hair that flew from his head. His stature was giant, very much resembling the mountains that surrounded his home. His built was strong, as strong as the rocks that built the foundations of a river itself. The army that managed to gain the courage to muster against the might of Rita Val was to see across the battlefield, Rita towering over the great banners that marked his name. And unfortunately for many of those that wanted to take on Rita in combat, he very much matched his intimidating presence with great skill in fighting. And many men fell underneath his blade. And with each man that fell, the heads were taken. But the heads were shaved, the hair and the beards. And what could make this man even more intimidating is that he ordered the women of his court to use the hair that was shaved before the decapitated heads were put on the spikes of his well into a great cloak. This cloak was worn by Rita Val in any court hearing, any celebration, any festival. It was a statement to his great fearsome reputation. Now despite Rita Val's godlike reputation, he was mortal. And the years were not kind on him. The years of fighting, drinking and whoring had a toll upon his body, his health 
his mind. Rita Val started to be stalked by the ghosts of his past. In his great hall, he was haunted by voices. In the hunting forests, he was stalked by the ghosts of the men he slew. And at night, he could hear the tears of many a woman and child that wept at the bodies of the men that he took down with his great blade. His mind was becoming poisoned. And it wasn't too long that greater warriors of a younger age started to eye up his borders. The years drew in like shadows, like creeping wolves in the night. And Rita Val gained message that spears were coming close to his great hall. He mustered his depleting loyal servants and gathered one last army to meet him on a very damp and misty morning. Rita Vard was no longer fiery in the hair or as intimidating as he once was, but his bravery never left him. He drew his sword one last time and with his great herring beard, ran one last time against the shield wall. Many a man still had to take a spear into his body to subdue him. And with one dash of a sword, his head fell to the ground. But as his body lay rotting and his beard and hair cut as a mockery of his past, the remaining loyal servants carried his body to the highest mountain in Wales and gave him a burial that would only reflect his life and his stature. And it's said that the Bronze Age Khan stands firm and strong and overlooks the land of Areri is that of Gurisavaur.